Hello and welcome to my guides. This is Saiken and today we're going to look into how to pull only one pack at a time in XCOM, one of the most endeared questions. Since the guide is a little bit longer, I uh, decided to do a TLDR version at the very beginning. So you get all of the important information in the first uh, one and a half minutes. And then you can make up your mind if you want to watch through the entire video to understand it better. So in order to not pull multiple tech, uh, packs in a single mission, you got to understand how pot engagement works and how they position themselves between you and the objective. You got to understand how different alert uh, levels, snow alert, yellow alert, red alert work for the AI, for their movement speed and for their vision distance. You gotta understand vision distance in general. Number three, you gotta understand and listen how sound cues work, both actual sound cues and in-game sound cues. Number four, you gotta keep track of the number of enemies during a mission and address how and where the additional enemies could be composed. Number five, you gotta take blue moves first with all of your operatives. First operative dictates uh, the point position, the others follow behind in a trail so that they don't pull anything on top. Number six, you gotta understand how cover works and how that impacts your positioning and the line of sight of your operative. Number seven, you should be careful with melee attacks and flanking unless you know how to trigger uh, not to trigger additional packs and some of that will be explained in the guide in detail. And number eight, a general reminder, you got to regularly review your missions and learn from your mistakes. So that's without further ado, the eight tips that I can give you. If you're interested to learn more, just stick around and listen to the rest of the guide. Take care and have a good one. Hello and welcome back to another guide for XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. Today, I decided to do a few more guides featuring kind of prominent topics that have been discussed and questioned over and over in the Reddit forum. So I'll do them one at a time and hopefully provide some thoughtful insight about how I would want to deal with topics. Uh, today's topic is going to be how to engage only one pod at a time. I've taken the liberty to actually start a virtual tabletop and use that as an explanation because it is much easier to explain strategies if you don't need to go through the animations of the game itself. Let's assume for today's uh, lesson that we're going to deploy a typical squad of six soldiers. I've color coded them an assault in red, a sniper in white, and a grenadier in yellow a um, specialist in green we got a reaper and we got a templar uh, with us and uh, this is kind of the abstract uh, representation of a deployment zone we are early in the game so we got three the typical three packs on legendary against us sector it plus a one urban trooper we got advent officer plus two troopers our mission objective which is in this case destroy or hack um, a specific point and we got another pack of three so you will sort of come along uh, that objective more or less uh, more often than not starting in concealment and typically having a timer of six or seven rounds in order to get it done so Let's first of all talk a bit about what XCOM generally does behind the scene and what you might not be aware of. So first things first, let's assume just for the sake of uh, making that argument, uh, this is how the uh, three pots are being uh, distributed and we'll make it even a little bit more difficult. Let's assume for the uh, discussion that there's even a fourth pot, so we're having a really difficult mission. We would, behind the scenes, uh, not know that if we wouldn't know how the game is actually uh, played out. But uh, what XCOM does is, in between your team and the mission objective, the aliens will always try to put at least one pot in that straight line. So take into consideration that although they are officially not aware where your pack is at, they will definitely at any time try to put at least one pot between you and the mission objective. On top of that, they will try to use the closest pot to you. So this would be 23 here and 25 here. So in this case, this pot 
in order to get closer to you and try to engage you somehow. That behavior becomes incredibly obvious if you're using a single Reaper, like I did in my legendary uh, Lone Wolf run, where I played the game with only one soldier per mission. And I was just trying to stealth run a couple of runs. And essentially what I did is I oftentimes was trying to do something like this, getting around here and to the objective. And by the time that I came close to the objective, really what happened is the entirety of the map was already following me and was trying to move just ever so closely next to me and suspiciously often was trying to run. So number one or number one lesson uh, is there will always be a pack that is trying to move to here. So let's say you would not move at all. What would happen is that this pack over here would start moving over their typical like one move, which is eight. Uh, uh, feed over here that's their patrolling um, move speaking about patrols second piece of info for you guys typically when the mission is deployed uh, the pods have different um, roles within uh, that deployment there will be always one pod that is uh, guarding the mission objective this pod will at best if you look at them typically uh, kind of control uh, control around here so th that's the maximum that they would normally do and they will always uh, stay very close to the objective the other three in this example like here here and here are potentially roaming or patrolling <clears throat> groups let's talk about the level of urgency that uh, the aliens have Typically speaking, there are three stages of urgency, no alarm whatsoever. That means that the aliens have a normal movement, uh, typically half of their movement. So that's uh, seven or eight tiles. And they will you will typically see them just like strolling around, nothing, uh, minding their own bus uh, business and nothing really happens. Yellow alert, on the other hand, is giving uh, is usually happening after uh, the aliens have heard about uh, something and will try to investigate it. Without going too deep into detail <clears throat> of the, how that is being done within XCOM, everything that you're doing makes some noise. For instance, if a grenade explodes, civilian screams and um, uh, glass break somewhere all of that makes noise and has a certain noise parameter that carries over the course of the battlefield there is a good chance that uh, the aliens will hear that and then start to investigate so once the aliens are on yellow alert they will move um, straight towards the target let's say we would be doing um, uh, we would be doing something here breaking a window or just being noisy overall that would mean that potentially the closest pack that has heard it would start moving down here and start triggering. Then there is red, uh, red alert, which typically happens if there is already a confirmed sighting of XCOM and other packs are close. So they will start to actually run towards the target, which is happening whenever you're kind of in a fight and you would uh, notice that another pack just steers right into the fight and you get an additional pack. So I'm mentioning all of that theoretical stuff to make you understand how the engine works behind the scenes so that you can take that into consideration. Don't worry, I'll come to a couple of tips and tricks how you can um, work through that right away. So let's uh, talk about how we can use or abuse that for, other, uh, for our own purpose. Let's say we've started here and we would be doing kind of a typical uh, start. Reaper begins to move forward, takes its entire 15 turns. We're uh, leaving it all the way up here. So what happens then is um, you would be able to spot out um, uh, potentially the majority of this scenery here, but you would not yet be able to spot out that other pack. Cool. So, you know, there is one uh, pack of enemies right there. And you would know that the mission objective is over here. Uh, you would potentially 
um, move a sniper into a full cover position, double move maybe that ranger inside behind cover. Uh, you would move the uh, Templar also uh, close to it. Maybe the specialist behind cover here and maybe another cover position for the Grenadier. Something along the lines of that and you decide to commit to go into um, a full alley fight with the um, enemy. So uh, remember what I mentioned about uh, the proximity and what happens. So this is the line between you and and uh, the objective and 14 15 this pack here is still the closest so what they would do is they would move closer to that line so you would see them actually moving up to here let's say for the purpose of uh, this video that uh, these guys would just stand and that's about it maybe they go to here and uh, that is okay these guys take a random uh, move it's uh, not yet not much is happening and these guys are just moving here so that's one x from turn simulated uh, by me being the engine now let's talk about engagement and let's also talk about what to do and what not to do currently we're still in concealment and uh, that essentially allowed us to just take full positions although we knew uh, that these guys were up there let's assume just for a second um, we are uh, fighting against these guys and without now going into engagement details there's a different guide coming out for engagements and overwatch ambushes to go through that in detail let's just uh, say uh, you were able to kill both of them and uh, use most of um, your skills just to do it reaper moves up to here but doesn't really spot these guys out and um, maybe th that positioning here remains the same you didn't really want to use the templar yet the, the other skills were used to kill both of them okay cool so let's update our vision uh, line real quick and now we're uh, going to talk about the actual engagement so the reaper is still hidden and concealed in the shadows these guys over here have heard the noise and will double move as yellow alert to here not seeing your uh, comrades yet these guys here would still keep their position and you wouldn't uh, hear noise now here's an interesting way of how to deal with uh, those situations number one when let's make a different example let's say they're moving over here but they are not showing themselves uh, because that is oftentimes the case where most of the players struggle if they don't really see or know when and how to engage let's just say you've heard a movement indicator from the north and you're trying to uh, somewhat move to them keep in mind we still had seven rounds so there is plenty of momentum for us and plenty of time to actually do the mission objective but what many people will do is they get impatient and just try to rush it. And what the enemies are doing here is a typical XCOM um, behavior as well. They are clustering up pretty densely so that it becomes more and more difficult for you to actually engage them. So obviously the wrong behavior here would be to just rush in and, uh, do, um, and, and do your things. Let's say the Reaper... Uh, the player forgets that uh, they have a reaper and uses them to scout out how could you or, le or let's say that you, you don't have a reaper in that uh, situation how could you even without a scout uh, start to find out how to proceed even further number one a few tips now number one be aware of vision blockage there is the possibility that there is a pack here that there is a pack here there's the possibility that even inside here, if there are no windows, that there is another pack in there. So just be mindful of what you're not seeing and what could be happening. Movement indicators, second tip, will give you the direction of the closest pack. So that means these guys would be closest. Um, to make that realistic, uh, these guys might have moved up to here and are now further away from us uh, so that this pack up here, uh, this pack up here, is the closest one to us. What you need to do if you're engaging uh, without a scout is 
what I would call the kind of safety zone. Um, and what that uh, means is the first person within your squad determines how far you can or should go in. Let's say we're doing uh, something smart, taking um, a blue move over here, six fields easily blue move with our um, assault. And to illustrate a bit further, we're now coming to very technical terms. This here is the distance that the scout could uh, watch. So that's the um, actual perception distance. So you wouldn't even really f uh, see all of uh, that stuff here, only the red one. Now, you would not be able to, to see an enemy yet um, and would not be spotted out. Keep in mind, the enemy on the other hand, and I'll illustrate that here as a maybe greenish circle, has a longer uh, perception range, even though they can never spot you out if you are not spotting them as well. So that has a couple of implications. Uh, you can already see, and maybe I'll uh, change the color here to make it a bit less intrusive. Um, just using light blue for now. I think that's a bit better. So what you can see is they would be aware of this position here. And uh, what you often see if you continue to do overwatch traps specifically on gate crusher is that the en enemies will not just move into you. And that's one of the cases where they can see you, but you cannot yet see them. But you know exactly that if you move one or two uh, fields that they will essentially start to hit um, and uh, will engage. Now, the way that that works from a mechanical perspective is the moment that you would move somewhere into that proximity where you would be able to spot them out and they would be able to spot you out, they will engage and the pot is officially triggered. Now, I've deliberately chosen this position here in order to uh, show you something uh, from a safety perspective. Remember that I said uh, there is kind of that technique of the first person dictates it with their blue move um, what you need to do and how far you can uh, go ahead. So the tip here is number one, always move all of your units with a blue move first before you are doing any shooting or any other abilities such as Overwatch. That's just good XCOM play. Number two, make sure that if you're moving your first um, uh, soldier, that that dictates uh, the distance, how far you can actually move in. So this assault here is currently our front line. He's the point person that dictates every other single move. So what that means is safe fields would be behind uh, the person here, anywhere in that corridor. Fields that are not safe, uh, obviously fields ahead of him, but also fields such as this one here or this one here that would give you cover, but that would either expand the vision onto the left-hand side or further towards um, the upper-hand side. And that's exactly the example that I wanted to make. Let's say he has not found out anyone yet. And Again, this is maybe uh, becoming a bit messy, but I still want to make my point here. So this here is now the third view distance, and I'll try to find a color that is not completely cancerous um, and unviewable. So I think that is uh, that sort of works. If we were to take cover over here at the bench, for instance, even though they are roughly on the same um, line, you would be uh, you would be able to spot those guys out. And what I'm seeing often when I'm reviewing other uh, players' missions is that they would move um, all of their folks up. So Grenadier moves over here, double move here, Overwatch, you name it. And then there's kind of that last sloppy move where they feel, okay, I have really no good place where the um, Templar could now go. Instead of moving them over here to take cover, uh, they feel like, you know what, here's a full cover spot, for instance, I want to do that. And that's really where the problem starts because now all of a sudden you begin to trigger a pot. So that is, I would call that the accident, uh, accidental uh, pot trigger. Now, 
let's assume just for the uh, sake of uh, that presentation here we've made that move and let's further assume that these guys have actually been standing down here um, I will reduce the vision range good vision range is reduced um, because now we're coming to the last lesson of today's engagement uh, review let's assume that the first move would have actually triggered them what typically happens is when a and when an enemy mob is triggered or an enemy pot is triggered is they will within one movement distance so that is six seven uh, fields they will splinter out and try to take cover position um, somewhat close to one another but they will not be in grenade lopping range so that's that might be a typical spread both of them could still work uh, and fight against the assault. They wouldn't see anyone here. So they will. the spread will only work based on the amount of enemies that they see, which would be in this case only the assault. So both of them would take cover positions against the assault and would make sure that they are not in grenade range of one another. So that is it. That's the turn of the enemy. And... I want to make sure that I construct an example, a typical example. Let's say they were standing here for the purpose of uh, that example. Now, um, next up, you um, start uh, peppering them with shots. Sniper uses his overwatch, um, and his long um, watch. Uh, you would maybe use the grenadier here, remove cover, um, maybe a combat protocol or a shot from the... Um, specialist and finally the um, ass uh, assault uh, would or the uh, the assault would uh, also engage so all of that happens and you are able to only kill one of the troopers and maybe the sector is badly injured let's just take that example now here's a typical here's a classical case of when to engage and when not to engage of course uh, the obvious play here is to use your templar shout out by the way to hogbite if you have not uh, named your templar hogbite then you are doing something wrong let's say you want to use your templar and you want to uh, start uh, finishing this guy off because you simply don't want to be mind controlled uh, you don't want any of the um, zombies to uh, to get up but by moving here, what would obviously happen, I mean, you can already kind of see that, right? Is first of all, you would get a much larger line of sight. And with that much larger line of sight, what would happen is clearly Hogbite would trigger these guys. These guys would trigger him. And all of a sudden, you do have that situation happening. Maybe someone who is really moving into the house standing on, uh, all the way at, at a window here and a guy moving here. So that would be a typical spread that they would take once that's happening. Okay, so you killed the sector, cool, but you did uh, did that at the expense of now taking three shots, maybe even a marking and two further shots. And since you have nicely clustered up here, what could happen is that one of them even has a grenade, throws them, worst, worst, worst case scenarios, throws the grenade, the car, um, starts burning or even explodes uh, that is then grenade damage plus explosion so you could almost look at like two to three people in your squad dying just from that nasty situation so let's roll that situation back just a tiny bit shall we we're still in this mode the sector is alive and hogbite is in here now the downside of any form of melee combatant is to know when to go in and when not to go in or when to engage and when not to engage of course you can in the future in the next turn move up and take shots of course you can charge in of course you can do all of that but be mindful of the overall situation number one if you are coming closer to that opening, there is a good chance that there will be kind of a window and you're even going to attract two packs at the same time. And 
Number two, if you are moving ahead of the squad, there is again a pretty solid chance uh, that will um, cost you uh, that, that that will cost you dearly because another pot um, adds on. So what are my general tips for, for this? And I hope I can be as specific as possible and not generic. If you find yourself in a situation where you really want to do a flank, ask yourself, do you have the agency uh, to, to do that? And what I mean with agency is count the overall number of enemies on the map. You will get that from the difficulty rating. And therefore you can somewhat estimate just how many enemies uh, uh, there will be on uh, the map. Based on that, decide how many enemies you've already killed and what the kind of risk versus reward is. Let's say in this case, you would know it's around 10 to 12. Um, we've um, had a deployment of uh, uh, 10 enemies on this map and you would know that at this point you've only killed four, so engaged four, which means there are still six potential enemies somewhere on the map and it's not that far away from the um, mission target. Keep in mind that there will always be one pack at the, at the mission objective and keep in mind that the other packs will eventually like get into your way to make sure that there is continuous engagement. XCOM 2 has not been developed as a stealth game. It is a continuous engagement game. So if you keep that in mind, you hopefully come to the conclusion in this example that it's a small map. There are six unknown entities somewhere out there. It would be suicidal to move in. Sometimes it's better to take one shot from an enemy and start engaging them next turn instead of rushing in. Now, of course, that all becomes uh, relative. If your timer runs out, you need to engage uh, faster. But what is going to happen in all, uh, in all reality here is if you just use the autogun of Hogbite and uh, end of turn is happening, this guy here is maybe going to summon uh, a zombie. So uh, here uh, is the abstract uh, representation of a zombie moving to here. This pack here would potentially uh, fully move in, then engage. You would see that they are running into their um, individual spots. Let's say they are taking cover here, here, and here. And that would be your setup for next round. Better have that setup going than to, um, uh, than to move in. And quite frankly, if you have that setup going, then next turn, I would based on the information, again, de potentially decide, listen, you now have seven out of 10 um, enemies engaged. There is very, there's a high likelihood that the last pack is up here. So I would potentially say all of that here is a no-go zone. So if you want to kill the enemies and you definitely want to take the two for one with the sector, you're potentially moving up here. And staying out of line of sight of the guys uh, up here, you're hitting the sector, uh, killing it. With that, the sector would die. And potentially, once that is happening in the zombie, is that you would um, start flailing all of uh, the others, maybe removing their cover, maybe one by one uh, just uh, shooting them out. You still, in that example, would have a few turns left in order to uh, finish the mission. So. What have we learned today? Summary. Number one, line of uh, sight is important. I was trying to indicate that with the virtual tabletop here. Number two, I mentioned that there will always be a pack that is trying to move its way uh, between your guys and, in this case, from the starting position to here, uh, your guys and the target zone. It's always the closest operative to the um, mission target that determines this invisible line. Learning number three is if you are engaging uh, with an enemy in concealment, keep in mind that they do have longer vision range than you do have. Learning number four is if you are engaging with a team, make sure that you're only using blues, uh, blue moves first before everybody is in position and then start to actually engage with them. Number five is um, accept that there might be a potential for advent to kind of lurk in the shadows and uh, use your positional knowledge. Think through how many enemies are left over before engaging, uh, because that dictates the likelihood that you're not going to uh, pull another pack. 
And number six, um, keep in mind that the enemies will have a no alert, yellow alert, red alert status. So if you start making noise, they will eventually in the next turn start moving into uh, you and start kind of adding towards uh, the uh, team. So that's really the six uh, tips that I have um, to share with you. Mod uh, or pod engagement in XCOM 2 is a pretty um, high art form. So you can learn that even after 1,000, after 2,000, even after 5,000 hours of gameplay, but you will get more and more used to that. I hope that with the 20 minutes that we spend here, uh, that they are well invested. And please leave a comment uh, down below to let me know if um, a more tactical view on the whole topic is helpful. Thanks for watching, guys. And as always, enjoy the game. See you later. Bye-bye.